This is Valley View News, and these are today's headlines. Three people shot and killed in a Porter Ranch home are identified. CSUN's Tech Fest is back to help students and employers connect for the future. And the 63-year-old shoe retailer, Payless, is closing all stores, leaving 16,000 employees without jobs. Hello and welcome to Valley View News. I'm Scott Gearman. And I am Leslie Estrada. The Trump administration is launching a campaign to end the criminalization of homosexuality in 70 countries around the world. U.S. Ambassador to Germany Richard Grinnell, who is openly gay, says the administration does not want another member of the LGBTQ committee to die, as happened in Iran recently. The campaign is not coming out in favor of same-sex marriage, though. The main focus is to get rid of harsh punishment for the LGBTQ committee members all over the world. There is an update on the three men that died yesterday at a private residence in Porter Ranch. The LAPD have identified all three of the victims who were shot and killed at the 20,300 block of Via Galileo. Investigators say it wasn't a random act and the victims likely knew the suspect. California's attorney general says President Trump's national emergency declaration to fund the border wall violates the Constitution. California and 15 other states are suing the administration. The national emergency lets Trump use funds planned for other federal budgets, like the military. And I think we'll do very well. We have absolute right to do that. I have an absolute right to call national security. We need strong borders. Several other organizations are also suing the administration, including the Central for Biological Diversity and the Border Network for Human Rights. Protesters have taken to the streets to demonstrate against the national emergency in cities all across the country. Los Angeles had its pro-to-own protest as well. Valley View News' Samantha Martinez reports. There is no crisis. And you're not going to get any $5 billion. Yesterday, protesters stood on the steps of City Hall to rally against President Trump's national emergency declaration. Congresswoman Maxine Waters joined the activists to show her support. She said California is leading the way in the fight against the declaration. We don't care whether it's a concrete wall, it's a steel wall, or it's a beaded curtain. We're not going for it. Several groups attended the rally, including a resist Trump group called Indivisible. Vlad Popescu, who helped organize the protest, said they're here to unite and resist. And he's in, uh, creating fear uh, in order to push his racist agenda. And we're here to say, no, this is a fake emergency and uh, you're not doing the right thing. Many protesters held signs and posters while chanting, fake emergency. L.A. resident Nancy Villa said she thinks Trump shouldn't be in office. Congress holds the purse strings. He couldn't get what he wanted and he decided to declare this national emergency. I'm hoping it'll go through the courts and, and they'll make it right. California is one of 15 states, including Colorado and New Mexico, who are filing a lawsuit against President Trump's declaration. The president hopes by funding this law, they would prevent criminals, gangs, and human trafficking to enter into the United States. In downtown L.A., for Valley View News, I'm Samantha Rodriguez. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders joined the 2020 race for president today. He announced his run on Vermont Public Radio. He said his campaign will advocate policies that are supported by the majority of Americans. I'm running for president because we need to have the best educated workforce in the world. It is totally counterproductive for our future that millions of Americans are carrying outrageous levels of student debt, while many others cannot afford the high cost of higher education. He says his policies he campaigned on in the 2016 race are no longer radical. Early polls show Sanders is second among Democratic presidential hopefuls. Former Vice President Joe Biden leads the pack. Senator Elizabeth Warren, who also announced her presidential bid this month, made a campaign stop in Glendale. She spoke to 1,700 people at the Alex Theater. She wants universal ch child care for all children under six years old. Hello, Los Angeles! Start. There's a big overflow crowd out there. I'm telling you, folks are ready for change. Are you ready for change? She plans to pay for the child care with a 2% tax on people with more than $50 million in assets. 
She also spoke about her opposition to separating immigrant children from their families at the U.S.-Mexico border. Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas wrote today that the court should review the First Amendment case, known as the New York Times versus Sullivan. He wrote the opinion as part of an argument in another case before the court. The Sullivan case says public officials have a higher burden of proof when it comes to libel cases. Thomas thinks state laws, instead of the First Amendment, should have more influence over, li over libel cases. CSUN journalism professor Elizabeth Blakey says the ch chance of overturning the rule is very low because it is meant to protect accidental errors by the press. West Hollywood Mayor John Duran is refusing to step down despite sexual harassment allegations. The 59-year-old who is openly gay is being accused of harassing three members of the Gay Men's Chorus of Los Angeles. Chorus member Jason Tang says Duran came up behind him and put two fingers inside his waistband near his hip in the changing room in October. Other members have accused him of the same kind of behavior. Duran was involved in a lawsuit against the city in 2016 when his then deputy accused him of sexual harassment. The city council will have to decide if Duran's term will end early. Southern Californians may soon get to the Bay Area faster while not having to worry about speed limits. A new bill proposed by Senator John Morlock would add two additional high speed lanes to Interstate 5 and State Route 99. The lanes would extend from Bakersfield to Stockton. The idea for the bill came from Germany's Autobahn Highway. Speeds on the Autobahn can reach up to 125 miles an hour. Morlock says the bill will help reduce greenhouse gases while moving people faster. There's no date set for the Senate to vote on this bill. Regional weather has been full of surprises lately. Las Vegas woke up to two inches of snow Monday morning. They haven't had that much snow in a decade. Snowy conditions forced closure of Southern California state routes 243, 74 and 18, all are major arteries. Just last week, heavy rain caused damages to State Route 243. Now extre extreme snow conditions have caused indefinite closures. Construction of the LA Ram Stadium is approaching its final stages. Valley View News reporter Angela Rose reports on the economic benefits the stadium will have on the city of Inglewood. For three years now, the Rams have been back in Los Angeles, and this time they'll have an Inglewood Stadium as a permanent home. Locals say the facility will be a huge economic boost, while others worry about more traffic and higher rents. In Inglewood, you can basically think tomorrow, okay, I'm raising the rent. And you can do it because there is no rent control. Howard expects rents to go up three to seven percent. He says there are many benefits coming from the stadium. Jobs will be created for construction, the stadium, and nearby businesses. Plus, some Rams fans like Tom Bateman say they'll enjoy the stadium. Them moving, it was like taking a part of my childhood away. Bateman joined forces with the Bring Back the LA Rams Club for nine years to bring the team back home. And I never lost the passion. Uh, all through the years, the 21 years that the Rams were in here, everyone would say, well, what uh, team are you a fan of? I said, well, I'm a fan of the Los Angeles Rams. Despite the ramifications, LA Rams fans are looking forward to the stadium opening in spring of 2020. Reporting in Inglewood for Valley View News, I'm Angela Rose. New York Mayor Bill de Blasio says he is upset Amazon has pulled out of its deal to open headquarters in Queens working people rightfully are demanding their fair share. They look at a situation where wealth and power is concentrated in the hands of the 1%. They don't like what they see, and they're demanding more back. The plan would have employed more than 25,000 people in Queens. Amazon officials announced Sunday they would not go through with their plans, as announced in November. They said they felt criticized by numerous states, politicians, and did not think they had the support to complete the project. Amazon will move forward with existing plans in Virginia and Nashville. Payless Shoes is just another example of a well-established chain store losing ground to big box stores like Walmart and the Internet. Valley View News reporter Karina Vargas explains. In the coming months, Payless Shoe Source will close all 21,000 of its locations in the U.S. and Puerto Rico. Payless joins a list of iconic names like Toys R Us and Brookstone who have closed in the last year. In the era of Amazon, Walmart, and Target, customers are moving to online shopping, which is hurting traditional retailers like Payless. I'm not surprised. <laughs> 
you know, just like Toys R Us and all the other stores, um, I feel like a lot of bigger companies, online shopping, they're just taking over. Payless started liquidation sales last weekend. They stopped online sales and are directing shoppers to nearby stores. There's a manufacturing side to this. Professor Laura Hernandez says one reason for bankruptcy is the high cost of making affordable apparel. We get a lot of things now uh, manufactured overseas. Because it can be done cheaper overseas, I think that impacts um, our ability to keep stores open here. Customers are shopping at stores that offer a variety of products. Many prefer stores that are one-stop shop. From what I remember about Payless, they don't have a huge selection. It's kind of like one store and that is what you get. And like you said, Amazon, I feel like there's endless possibilities of things that you can find. Payless is expected to keep their doors open until the end of March. So hurry on over to one of these Payless locations to get shoes for you and your family before the deals end. Reporting in Northridge, I'm Karina Vargas with Valley View News. 16 people were rescued from a gondola ride at SeaWorld Monday night. San Diego Fire and Rescue responded to distress calls after high winds forced the gondola to stop above water. Fire officials said lifeboats and harnesses were used to safely remove all passengers from their gondolas. SeaWorld says it wasn't sure what caused the failure other than the wind. Meanwhile, SeaWorld is conducting another inspection of the ride. It's been a busy week in entertainment. Valley View's Claire Hambrick is here to explain. There are claims that actor Jesse Smollett offered to pay the two Nigerian brothers $4,000 to stage an attack on him, but their attorney Gloria Schmidt says the case is complicated. A lot of moving parts to this, so I am here for my clients and uh, I had a job to do specifically for them, so I'm not part of uh, Jesse's defense. Chicago police got a tip saying Smollett was spotted with his alleged attackers around the time the attack happened. The tip claims that the three were seen in an elevator at the apartment building where Smollett lives. So far, the police department has yet to comment on this latest tip. Attorney Michael Avenatti says he gave law enforcement officials a tape showing singer R. Kelly having sex with an underage girl. I'm working on this for the better part of 10 months on behalf of multiple clients and we've engaged in an exhaustive investigation and uh, I'm, I'm happy that we were able to locate this. The singer was acquitted of sexual misconduct and child pornography charges in 2008. Avenatti says the 45-minute video he gave to prosecutors hasn't been published and it isn't the same video used in R. Kelly's trial. The attorney claims that R. Kelly is easily identified on the video. Apparently, R. Kelly is the person doing the recording and adjusting the camera, Avenatti says. Ariana Grande is the first artist to hold the number one, two, and three spots on the Billboard Hot 100 chart at the same time. The Beatles were the last to do that in 1964. All three Grande songs are from her new album, Thank You, Next. Her album is also number one on the Billboard 200 albums. It's one week until the Oscars, and the Academy has announced actress and Broadway superstar Bette Midler will be singing. According to the Variety, Midler will perform The Place Where Lost Things Go from Mary Poppins Returns, which is nominated for Best Song. The Academy originally planned for only two performances in the Best Song category, but there was so much backlash, all five nominated songs will now be performed. The Academy has also announced that Queen will be performing. The band is the center of the Best Picture nominee, Bohemian Rhapsody. The film is up for five Oscars. The Academy did not say how the performance would be featured, but there have been rumors about the group opening the show. That's all for entertainment. Let's get more news. More to come on Valley View News. The NBA is creating a new league. And in health news, a new study says kids are actually spending more time than they were watching television.
Hi, Meals on Wheels. Hey, I'm Marco. I'm a college student, and I volunteer as a driver for Meals on Wheels. I think it's awesome meeting these people. I mean, they're so interesting. They've had so many wonderful experiences in life. Your community helps to raise you up into the person that you become. Meals on Wheels is a great way to give back to that community. Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. children in the U.S. struggle with hunger. Help end childhood hunger near you. Learn how at feedingamerica.org. Let's get the latest in international news from Andrea Tanchez in our Digital Media Center. Car companies are worried about their future with Britain set to leave the European Union in less than six weeks. Honda has announced it will shut down its manufacturing plant in the UK. It's been around for 30 years. More than 3,000 people are expected to lose their jobs. Honda CEO says the decision has nothing to do with Brexit, but Nissan says Brexit was their number one reason it scrapped plans to build a new SUV in England. One auto industry expert says companies were attracted to Britain because it gave them easier access to the European market. Car company executives say that without a deal by the end of next month, production and supply chains will be at risk. The NBA is launching a basketball league in Africa. Commissioner Adam Silver says the Basketball Africa League will feature several teams from across the continent, including Egypt, Kenya and Morocco. Silver says the league debuting next year is committed to using basketball as an economic engine for new opportunities across Africa. Five Americans are in custody in Haiti. People have been protesting since the beginning of this month in Haiti's capital. They're demanding the prime minister and president resign. Haiti's po police chief says the Americans are among eight people being held for possession of automatic weapons and pistols. He says they also had satellite phones and drones. The identities of the Americans have not been released. Venezuela opposition leader Juan Guaido has called on for volunteers to gather at Cucuta, Colombia. The goal is to shift stockpiled U.S. aid and carry it across the border in defiance of battled President Nicolas Maduro. He has blocked foreign assistance while his country remains in economic turmoil. The U.S. and other nations currently recognize opposition leader Juan Guaido as the country's interim president. The fashion industry is mourning the death of Karl Lagerfeld. The longtime creative director of Chanel was known for his dark glasses, fingerless gloves, and silver ponytail. Rumors of his poor health began after he missed his Chanel show last month. Chanel CEO says he was a creative genius ahead of his time. Lagerfeld had, also had very strong opinions over the years. He once said, sweatpants are a sign of defeat. You lost control of your life, so you bought sweatpants. Lagerfeld was 85 years old. That is all for international news. Now back to you guys in the studio. Now let's get the latest on health with Ethan Hansen. Kaiser Permanente's new medical school in Pasadena will waive tuition for its first five graduating classes. It hopes to eliminate medical students' financial burdens. Each class will have 48 students, that's smaller than the average medical school class. Students will skip lectured style courses. Instead, they'll get more hands-on training, starting with primary care. Kaiser's Medical School will be one of the few in the country not tied to a university. It starts accepting applications in June and classes start next year. Chronic wasting disease has been detected in deer and elk across half the country. Hunters are being warned to avoid handling or consuming infected meat. The disease affects the central nervous system. Animals show signs of drastic weight loss and lack of coordination. 
Although the disease can cause deer and elk to become more lethargic, they can also become more aggressive towards humans. Wisconsin may be legalizing marijuana and CBD oil. Governor Tony Evers says he plans to legalize 25 grams or less of possession, production, and distribution. For many Wisconsinites, things like medical marijuana or other products like CBD oil can help alleviate chronic pain from debilitating medical conditions. He says the proposal also points out the inequalities of minorities arrested for drug-related crimes. 33 states have legalized medical marijuana. 14 of them have said okay to CBD. The amount of TV and other screen time infants are consuming has doubled. The study in the Journal of the American Medical Association says increased screen time is associated with cognitive, language, social, and emotional delays. Kids watching too much TV or mobile devices are also an increased risk of obesity and impaired sleep. The amount of TV and other screen time infants are consuming has doubled. The study in the Journal of the American Medical Association says increased screen time is associated with cognitive, language, social, and emotional delays. Kids watching too much TV or mobile devices are also in an increased risk of obesity and impaired sleep. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends no screen time at all for babies and only an hour a day for kids ages 2 to 5. Back to Leslie and Scott for more news. Coming up on Valley View News, a career fair for tech students here at CSUN draws a big crowd. Also, someone put the tag in hashtag me too. Stay with us. I tried Oxy at a couple of parties. I thought I had it under control. I didn't know it'd be this addictive. I didn't know how far I'd go to get more. Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth, spread the truth. What if you could invest in the future? The future of kids, like a stock. Not the kind of stock that's about making money, but a stock for social change. A whole new kind of investment called Better Futures. When you invest, it helps kids go to college. Believe in us, invest in us, watch us grow. My name is Sydney, and I'm your dividend. Here is my handle and here is my spell. When I get all steamed up, then I shout. Tip, Tip me over, over and pour me, me out. Oh. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Cheers. Take time to be a dad today. Let's go to Londi Sagasume for the latest in tech and science news. Cal State Northridge held its annual Tech Fest for the 11th consecutive year at the Career Center. Event coordinator, 
Event coordinator Sarah Lee Long says many students attend the event because they're able to network with many employers. Um, the outcome of the event is that students are able to network and also find career opportunities, internships, full-time, part-time jobs um, with employers in the um, uh, tech industries. Primarily, uh, the industries here are um, engineering firms, uh, civil engineering, electrical, mechanical. Um, we have a lot of um, uh, city um, employers like LADWP is here, um, as well as uh, a lot of uh, privately contracted engineering firms. Several students like Benji Fernandez says they attend the event hoping to get an opportunity and get a step closer to the real world. Well, I really need an internship and I feel like this is a great opportunity to network with other companies as well as gain experience in the, you know, the real world industry. Help to really let an interview and more importantly an internship and hopefully a job once I graduate which is next year. More than 200 students were in attendance. Credit scoring as we know it is about to change at least for some people. Credit reporting agency Experian thinks it can improve a person's credit ratings by having access to online bank accounts. Experian calls its program Experian Boost. It takes information from a person's utility, internet, and cable bill payment history to contribute to their overall score. Some experts think this could be a faster way to build credit. The Federal Aviation Administration is investigating Southwest Airlines after some airline employees made mistakes in tracking the weights of checked bags on flights. The FAA says these mistakes made pilots miscalculate the plane's weight for takeoff, sometimes as much as a thousand pounds lower than the plane's actual weight. Excess weight on planes can reduce cruising speed and put more stress on landing gear. After a short holiday weekend, the stock market was calm today. The Dow Jones closed 8 points higher and the S&P 500 is up 4 points. Walmart continues to see high trades after crushing its earnings. Its stock prices are up 2% today. Hashtag Me Too may have gone a hashtag too far. The famous statue of a sailor kissing a woman was vandalized in Florida yesterday. Sarasota police say someone put hashtag Me Too on the woman's leg. The statue is called the Unconditional Surrender. Many people know it as Kissing Sailor Statue. By the way, the sailor featured in the World War II photo that the statue recreates died last Sunday. George Mendoza was 95. Similar statues are located in New Jersey, Pearl Harbor in Hawaii, Italy, San Diego, and New York City. That is it for social media and science news. Back to you. Tonight we get to see the biggest and brightest moon of 2019. The super snow moon is set to peak between 5.30 and 6.30 this evening. It occurs when the moon is closest to the Earth in its elliptical orbit. The super snow moon got its name from the Native Americans due to cold weather in February. The last super snow moon occurred 19 years ago. That's all for us at Valley View News. Thank you for watching. I'm Scott Gearman. And I am Leslie Estrada. For news any time of a day, go to our website, sundial.csun.edu. See you next week.